SpaceX primarily seems to be selling uh, a dream. 11 years ago at the Singapore Satellite Industry Forum in 2013, Richard Bowles, the regional sales director for Southeast Asia at Ariane Space, dismissed SpaceX, then a young company in the government-dominated space industry. At that time, SpaceX had a vision of building reusable rockets and an ambitious goal of launching 100 times a year, a target that seemed impossible for any private or government organization in the industry. This ambition was mocked heavily, and SpaceX was dismissed as a dreamer that no one wanted to wake up. Facing government organizations, major private companies, and startups in the industry, SpaceX calmly responded that they would let their actions speak for themselves. Now, more than a decade after that conference, we look back and analyze the current situation to see how SpaceX has surpassed all expectations, delivering a silent but resounding slap to its critics. Let's assess the current state of Ariane Space and SpaceX, who is really asleep at the wheel. Europe's Ariane 6 project, with a development cost of $4.4 billion, more than 11 times the development cost of SpaceX's Falcon 9, has become a symbol of delay and inefficiency. The development of Ariane 6 started in 2014, and nearly a decade later, this rocket has yet to launch, raising serious questions about its competitiveness. These delays are extremely concerning. Previously, the European Commission had scheduled six Ariane 6 launches to send up precious Galileo satellites, two in 2017 and another four in 2020, each carrying two satellites. According to the plan, three of these missions were supposed to launch in 2023. Naturally, this didn't happen. The first Galileo launch wouldn't occur until after the maiden flight of Ariane 6, and Ariane 6 still hasn't made it. So, with a bitter effort, they had to negotiate with the very entity they once scorned to launch these missions, and they couldn't rely on Ariane to ensure the missions would be completed on time. As a result, SpaceX secured two contracts to launch Galileo satellites totaling 180 million euros. On the eve of the historic first flight of Ariane 6 on July 9th, another shocking development occurred. UMETSAT, the European organization responsible for launching and managing weather satellites, abandoned Ariane 6 in favor of SpaceX. The Meteosat third-generation Sounder 1 satellite, hailed as a unique technological masterpiece of Europe, will now head to geostationary orbit aboard a Falcon 9 rocket in 2025. This decision is not only a severe blow to the confidence in Ariane 6, but also a silent declaration of the uncertainty UMITSAT feels. Philippe Baptiste, head of CNES, could not hide his deep disappointment, calling this a heartbreaking shift and a dark day for the European space industry. This is not just a setback in the progress of Ariane 6, but also a warning sign for the future of Europe's space industry. Europe's indecisiveness and lack of deep understanding of the space industry have led them to a self-defeating step. They decided to phase out Ariane 5 without having a solid alternative ready. Ariane 6 not only unable to provide a significantly cost-effective solution due to its non-reusable design and cost overruns from delays, is also not ready to take over its predecessor's role. This highlights the severe lack of flexibility and adaptability in the face of a rapidly changing and unforgiving space market. Now, let SpaceX wake you up. Founded by someone who didn't know how to build rockets, SpaceX achieved the first successful launch of the Falcon 9 in just five years, with a total development cost of under $400 million. In 2023 alone, they launched the Falcon family 96 times, all successfully coming incredibly close to the 100 launches Europe once deemed an impossible dream. And they are on track to exceed that this year. With SpaceX aiming for 148 Falcon 9 launches in 2024, 1.48 times the dream Europe scoffed at. This serves as a powerful reminder to Europe about the importance of constant innovation and relentless effort. Moreover, the development of Starship serves as the ultimate wake-up call 
While Europe spent a decade developing a non-reusable solid rocket, SpaceX progressed to the next stage, a fully reusable launch system capable of lifting 200 tons into space. SpaceX has already conducted four full-stack Starship test launches, each achieving groundbreaking progress. Last May, Josef Oschbacher, Director General of the European Space Agency, finally acknowledged SpaceX has undeniably changed the launcher market paradigm as we know it. With the dependable reliability of Falcon 9 and the captivating prospects of Starship, SpaceX continues to totally redefine to totally redefine the world's access to space, pushing the boundaries of possibility as they go along. He at least recognized and accepted the harsh reality of the Ariane 6 crisis and acknowledged SpaceX's breakthroughs. However, there are still those who stubbornly refuse to lower their pride to learn from reality. Honestly, I don't think Starship will be a game changer or a real competitor. This huge launcher is designed to fly people to the moon and Mars. Ariane 6 is perfect for the job if you need to launch a 4 or 5 ton satellite. Starship will not eradicate Ariane 6 at all. Tolker Nielsen, the ESA Director of Space Transportation, responded in a recent interview with Space News. His indifference towards Starship and his view that Ariane 6 isn't meant to compete with Starship is quite laughable. He refuses to admit that they are developing a product similar in function to Falcon 9, but more expensive and non-reusable. Falcon 9 has been ahead even before Ariane 6 started. With Starship, SpaceX can finally implement this rideshare strategy that has already proven successful with Falcon 9. This involves offering shared launch services for multiple small satellites, allowing them to share space on the same launch at a very low cost. This is a smart, cost-effective strategy that opens up space access to many projects with limited budgets. Take SpaceX's Transporter 1 mission as an example. Launched on January 24th of 2021 from SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Transporter 1 was the first dedicated launch for SpaceX's small set rideshare program. The mission made history by deploying 143 satellites in a single launch, including 133 commercial and government satellites and 10 Starlink satellites. This event not only showcased SpaceX's superior capability and flexibility, but also opened new doors for businesses and organizations, allowing them to send satellites into orbit cost-effectively without the need for individual launches. Starship not only enhances capabilities in space logistics, but also in military transportation and space tourism, emphasizing rapid development, low costs, and primarily private funding. In stark contrast, Ariane 6, much like the SLS relies heavily on state budgets through ESA. The cost overruns of Ariane 6 have become even more severe, with the initial goal of reducing costs by 50%, now reduced to just 40%. Due to inflation, European officials believe this reduction is no longer achievable. Ariane Group, the main contractor for Ariane 6, has requested a significant subsidy, 350 million euros annually, which would essentially wipe out any cost savings from using the Ariane 6 rocket. Europe has implemented policies requiring its satellites to use Ariane 6 to ensure the rocket's utilization. Ironically, while Amazon's Kuiper project has secured over 80 launches from Ariane Space with the Ariane 6, Blue Origin with their new Glenn and United Launch Alliance with their Vulcan, to date, only Vulcan has taken off, and only once. The resounding success of SpaceX today is the sweetest rebuttal to any doubts from Europe. Without grandstanding, SpaceX has proven its innovative ambition through steady strides. That silence, in fact, is a slap louder than any words could ever be. Fortunately, not everyone carries the mentality of that's too far-fetched, we can't do it. Otherwise, we might still be stuck in the Stone Age. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.